As consumers, we are always being targeted by companies that want to part us from our money. Auto companies will tell us how fast their cars are and how great the gas mileage is, while the fast food industry tries to sell us a healthy value meal. You'll only be cool if you wear certain name brand clothing, and let's talk about your hair. That style is so last week. And of course, there's the most sought after market of them all, the disposable income group, or grown up toys. Who really has to have a jet ski, a PlayStation 3, or a motorcycle? No one. We buy these things because we want them and they fill a desire. For this reason, the companies that sell them have to make them look even more attractive to get the consumers to drop their guard and become emotionally invested in the product. But where do we draw the line? What is the actual responsibility of the manufacturer to the customer once they have successfully courted the wallet, uh, the customer? There was a time in this country's history when customer service actually meant something. Companies and their employees actually took pride in making sure the customer was completely satisfied. I purchased a Samsung SCDC 164 DVD camcorder back in November of 2006. Now I know you may be saying this is February of 2008. I know that, but bear with me and I'm going to tell you a story and you may even get a laugh or two along the way. As a high school basketball coach and part-time video editor, I needed a reliable camcorder to film events. I was using a Sony VHS Compact at the time and I'll say that it gave me five good years of service. However, it was about the fourth year that it started to develop issues. It would not work with a battery pack any longer and had to be plugged in all the time. So I decided to go to a local Best Buy, and that is where I purchased the Samsung, to the tune of $378.99. When it came to recording our games, I usually had to rely on either a parent or a student to run the camera, but none of them wanted to use the Samsung. They were all intimidated by the buttons and the settings and wanted to just stick with the VHS Compact, so we did. I kept the Samsung in its box knowing that sooner or later I was going to need it. It ended up being later. 13 months to be exact. With the Sony finally going to wherever good cameras go after they die, we turned our attention to the Samsung. And this is where the fun begins. I soon discovered that this camera is horrible at gaining and maintaining a focus on any subject for any period of time. It has the electronic version of ADD. The moment the subject moves, it is lost and trying to regain focus again, which with live sports is pretty much all the time. I decided the best thing to do would be to return to the scene of the crime, so I went into Best Buy and stated my case. The service person agreed to allow me to exchange the camera for another one that would work properly. When she attempted to ring the switch through the system, however, it would not allow it because the Samsung was beyond the 12-month warranty date by 45 days. She did send me off with an 800 number for Samsung customer support, which as you're soon going to see, is an oxymoron in itself. So later that day, I called Samsung, January 31st of 2008 to be exact, and spoke to a member of a group that calls themselves the Upper Management. She would identify herself only as Gail. She listened to my story, placed me on hold for a short period of time, and then informed me that I was SOL, or in other words, stuck with a bad camera. I could send it in for repairs, she told me, for $80, but I knew it was not a repair issue, and as it turns out, I would soon discover I was right. I asked Gail for her supervisor. She told me that there was no one over her. So I said, does that mean you signed the paychecks? She told me no and that her paychecks were direct deposited into her account. Well then Gail, you have someone over you. I need to talk with the person whose name is on the staff paychecks. After all, when you have an issue, you want to talk with the organ grinder, not the monkey. She then told me that the only thing she could give me would be an address. Samsung doesn't have a phone in their corporate offices? Are you kidding? With all of the technology they produce and push on the consumers, no one thought to set themselves up with a couple of phones? So I asked Gail a little more about herself. Things like, what's your sign? What's your favorite color? Do you have a last name? All right, the first two I was just making up. She told me that she didn't give out her last name. That's understandable. Some people may take more dramatic and drastic actions when they've been built out of $400. So, instead I asked her for her ID number. She told me that they do not have ID numbers, and that if I called and asked for her by name, her colleagues would be able to locate her. So now I'm thinking, she's in this exclusive group called the Upper Management, 
her paychecks are invisible, and she has no name. I'm clearly dealing with some sort of secret society. Here on camcorderinfo.com, they've got an entire article up about the Samsung SCDC164 camcorder and a review to go with it. It says very clearly here that the Samsung model number SCDC164 features a 1 quarter 5 inch CCD with 680K gross pixels. This is larger than the average chip size but the same pixel count. Resolution is largely dependent on the number of pixels and low light performance is largely dependent on chip size. Why the discrepancy with this particular chip? It could be for a number of reasons probably related to lower manufacturing costs. What we can tell you is that this is not a very good chip. On a scale of 1 to 10, let's look at the ratings this camera received. Video performance of 4.5, a zoom of 5, focus 6.5, exposure 4, shutter speed 3. These numbers are embarrassing. So I decided I was going to take a look into Samsung and find out a little bit more about the corporation itself. So I went online and I saw this. Yeah, imagine. Imagine they actually offer customer support on a product that they know isn't worth the money they're charging. Imagine somebody would actually step up and own them. Imagine that they really can. You'd have to imagine. Meet the CEO, Kun Hee Lee. Looks like an upstanding kind of guy. Unfortunately, he and his wife helped get the company some press they really didn't need. I'm no expert, but I know when I see the word slush fund, it can't be good. As you can see for yourself, Samsung has what has to be considered at the very least questionable ethical tactics. This story claims that the conglomerate created a $211 million slush fund to bribe influential figures. When you get this kind of publicity, there's only one thing left that can happen. Profits usually go down. I called the following morning and spoke with Joseph, another mysterious member of the upper management circle. Here is the actual call the 